Thank you very much uh, for a nice introduction and also she has given a very tough challenge asking me to stand between uh, you and the lunch. Thank you very much. I hope I don't disappoint you and that too I came with a hundred slides. Hope you're all ready for that. <laughs> no, I think it was a great, uh, uh, great, uh, I've, I've been going through that in the previous uh, round table. It has been a great insights and uh, thank you very much uh, ET. Uh, energy world uh, for putting together the nice uh, uh, event and this kind of events we need you know we have been talking a lot of collaboration co-creation the only way is to have these kind of many things all the stakeholders coming together and uh, and uh, and discussing you know various uh, challenges and opportunities so that you know we are able to put together uh, a very nice uh, program for India in that so let me take a very quick uh, few slides. Uh, I, I come from Hitachi Energy. We are around, uh, this year we are celebrating a 75 years of our existing in India in a different formats, in a different forms in that. We just kick started our 75 years and uh, thank you very much. Many of our customers, partners who have been uh, really be, being with us uh, in the last 75 years. Huh? It's uh, the very few companies and that way we are very proud to be part of this journey in that. So I'm sure all of you know this, but I just want to give you my perspective from the technology standpoint, uh, you know, where, where we come from here. And 2023 has been a very, very important milestone for the global. This slide is for a global view on that. And they saw a steep change in the renewable capacity addition across the geographies, whether you talk about the Europe, you talk about, you know, US, and also talk about China. China, I'll, I'll talk more on that. And the global annual renewable capacity addition increased by almost 50%, 50% to 510 gigawatt of renewable uh, in, the, in that. And uh, this is the fastest growth rate in the, in the past two decades or so. And this is a, also, if I quote this uh, IEA report, International Energy Agency report, uh, it, this is the 22nd year in a row that renewable capacity additions set a new record. And while increase in Europe, US, and Brazil at all time, hey, China's acceleration was extraordinary, extraordinary in the last year, 2023. China last year uh, commissioned as much solar as solar PV as the entire world did in 2022. So that's the kind of scale we have been talking also in part of the manufacturing. In the one year, China did commission almost equivalent to the whole world did in 2022. So look at you know the scale uh, what we are talking about in that. So global uh, solar PV, the good part is that global solar PV alone accounted for a three quarter of the renewable capacity added worldwide now. So that's a clear thing when you're talking about the renewable, the solar is definitely playing a major role in every part of the geographies starting less, less in Europe, but more in, uh, in Asia. And, and also in, uh, in uh, uh, Americas, et cetera, in that. So that clearly shows uh, that, you know, urgent need for the energy transition and uh, pace of renewable energy we have talked about is that. And look at, at a 2050 scenario, the global power system, we're talking about both supply side and, and the demand side, they need to add at least four times of power generation capacity at the global scale, okay, what it is now to take care of the demand, anticipated demand. And also this power system need to transfer three times as much electrical energy compared to 2020 level in that. So that's the reason the electricity will be the backbone of our entire energy system going forward. It's already seeing the signs. And as we are moving, you can see more and more uh, uh, that electricity will be and shall be the backbone of the entire energy systems in that. So coming to the from global scenario, if I come to the India, and uh, we are fifth largest installed capacity, even though the scale compared to our neighbor is, is, uh, uh, is a miles to go before we reach there, but we are the fifth largest capacity of the solar power. And if you take the last 10 years, and we have added almost 30 times in the last 10 years, from a 2.6 gigawatt to 74 gigawatts. The rate is from a low base, it, is, it is definitely has picked it up, and several, several initiatives which we have talked about, you know, whether the, uh, the, the, the talking about the, you know, tariff-based competitive biddings have really brought down the uh, tariffs of those projects, grid-connected rooftop, and production-linked incentive schemes have fueled the growth of the manufacturing, 
and you know there are many many uh, initiatives from the policy standpoint creating the ecosystem standpoint and this case these solar plants have become business cases itself in that so that's the reason you can just see how uh, sharply it is going on in india and uh, india is the fifth largest and it is poised to be the second largest especially in the solar in the coming years in that so what india outlines its action, how India is outlines its action plan. You know, we come up with the national electricity plan, which is estimated to have installed capacity by 3031, around 900 gigawatt, with over a third from the solar. So this is the plan, okay? So there could be some difference between what we say, what we do, but even if you factor that particular thing, uh, it's a huge opportunity within India itself, leave alone exporting of some of our manufacturing products, from uh, India to the rest of the world, but it's a huge opportunity for us to be, you know, decarbonize our whole industry, decarbonize and and make the make the road for our net zero in that. So there is a structural efforts are required to build an entire ecosystem, whether it is a generation, transmission, distribution, or on the consumption standpoint, we need you know more and more uh, ecosystem need to be built on that. But you can look at. Uh, uh, we have everywhere, uh, we've been talking about the collaboration. I think this is the real one because the challenge is huge and the opportunity is also huge. It's not possible for any one single organization, one single country can do that. What we need is working together, collaborating and leveraging of the strengths, both the, you know, our customers, partners, suppliers, and then making this particular, uh, you know, huge job. This is no more uh, incremental growth, right? We are talking about x 3x 4x 5x and whatever we are talking about the sustained long uh, multi-prong collaboration efforts among the stakeholders to have this 500 or 500 plus fossil free in that india has been an adopter of technology and um, uh, india also now get into you know creating of the technology and that's where we'll have a lot of value add into that so with the we have a right now the demand okay we have the scale now you know previously we didn't have the scale today we have the scale and leveraging on the scale, I think it's it's important that you know we can build our innovation-led manufacturing and innovation-led progress on that. And that's where I think we have a huge amount of uh, uh, you know, value add we can bring among all the stakeholders in that. So it's a challenge. If a talent pool is also a very big challenge because we are not talking about that yet uh, in the same way as we are talking about the generation because we have a challenge on the transmission. Uh, network because we're already seeing a lot of you know news articles saying that yeah the solar plants are getting ready in six months to one year but then the evacuation is in a bottleneck and also the availability of the skill set is even more in that so let me touch upon you know one or two aspects of that uh, <clears throat> of this what are the challenges and sol solutions evacuation is for sure is a is a big a big amount of challenge and uh, uh, as you can see here, uh, this is also quoted by the ministry that we need $160 billion investments required till 23 for achieving our own targets. And over the past decade, India has added uh, nearly 180,000 kilometers of transmission lines and 3.5 million uh, kilometers of distribution lines. And to, uh, to you know, keep up the pace, and India needs to accelerate on this in that. So, well, it's, it's a, I always say that, you know, there are huge amount of technologies are available. There's a lot of technologies are available, indigenously developed some of them, and also some of the technologies have been given, uh, have, been, have been, you know, installed. But if you really look at India as a country, in this sector, the energy sector, they always adapted the technology very well in time. Like, you know, whenever we create the technology in, uh, and we start rolling out in you know, Europe and other things, almost at the same time, or few years down the line, the India always used to adopt. One example I'll give you, HVDC technology, which is primarily used for you know, transporting of the long distance uh, uh, power transmission or, or energy. And this was invented around some six, 70 years back or something like that. India has adopted 40 years back this technology in India in that, far ahead of the many other countries in that. So this technology now has become like a, like you know a mainstream technology because this technology is as i said used to deploy only for transmitting the long distance thousands of kilometers from a pithead coal plant to the load centers but today by virtue of its uh, inherent strengths and uh, this uh, technology has become uh, is able to enable large-scale integration of the solar wherever you have the large-scale solar power 
20 gigawatt or something like that. And this technology is very robust, not only enabling the transmit of the power, but also ensuring that the grid is stable, resilient, and robust in that. So smart investments is extremely re uh, required for the implementation of their technology at a scale and speed that is required for these transitions in that. So many times, a lot of focus is there in the generation, right way. So if you really look at our history in the last 20 years, we've been always talking about whether it's the fossil generation, now it's a solar generation, but we need to also talk in the same breath, in the same uh, uh, way, need to talk, how can we evacuate? How can we ensure that whatever we produce, we are able to dispatch uh, every time? So that's extremely important. For that, we need to start much ahead of the generation to come in that, okay? So how do we ensure that, you know, those are the things are possible in that? So the one technology which I talked about is the essential technology, HVDC, because we all know this technology has become a now mainstream, mainstream technology. And this projects we used to have previously in the last 30 years, one project for every four or five years. Okay, one project, it's a, it's a billion dollar kind of projects. One dollar per, per every uh, four or five years. But today, this is the need is to have at least one or two projects per year because that's a demand is happening. But then we are not able to have the ecosystem planned in that because these projects take anywhere between three to four years from planning stage to completion, and that will not happen. And if you don't plan well ahead of time, we need to have a corridors defined. Where do we, you know, have this evacuation is coming in? from where to where do that. And this technology provides unidirectional power flow. So that way the planning is extremely simple in that. So HV Dings embedded in a, in a CES plan add to add almost 50,000 plus circuit kilometers and 400,000 plus MBA of interstate transmission. So these have been in a good way that in a first time we have we see as part of a CES plan. Uh, th those are the things have been have been put into that plan by 2030. So it's a good good thing that we have that visibility, but we need to also work as a with all the collaborators to ensure that these have been these need to be implemented well ahead of the time, uh, so that we are able to dispatch whatever we produce, whether it's the solar or wind in that. And the whole technology fundamentals of the power system are changing because with the with the so much of intermittency is coming in. It's also important that while you take care of when the sun shines, when the wind blows, but at the same time, you are able to predict, you are able to you know, assess and able to dispatch what we produce it. The whole technology is coming into the three dimensional. The sustainable products and systems, because in the decarbonized world, we cannot have a pro pro products where, it, like a, for example, SF6 switch gear is, is no more a, no more a, you know, uh, a thing to have in, a, in the decarbonized uh, society, right? Because SF6, you all know, is 23,000 more potent than CO2 in that. That's number one. The number two is that power electronics, everything we talk about, whether it is HVDC, whether it is a startcom, whether the electrical vehicles or electrical vehicle charging does include the power electronic because it's, it has the inherent strengths, inherent qualities to be able to control, to be able to you know, uh, manage the both flow as well as the control of that. So everywhere the power electronics has been built in the future power systems in that. And to manage this complexity and manage this uncertainty, we also to understand the flow of uh, electrons close to the real time, we need to have the whole ecosystem completely digitalized to the almost near to that. So that is how the whole uh, uh, systems are enabling it. And the key is that whatever we are planning now, we need to ensure that every component going into the future power system is a future proof. And that is the key. And that's where the planning stage all the regulators, all the stakeholders, customers, and the manufacturers need to work together to ensure that you know, we really mean that you know, we are enabling this future power system more reliable and secure and able to take care of any kind of uh, uh, changes. That's the reason agility has to come into that. So moving to the, my last one, I think you have talked about it. India, I would say, is a huge opportunity for us, and there are several pathways to solar ambition, and solar is going to be the mainstream globally, and especially in India, even more so in that. And I've also given a, a, a kind of comparison how China is adding, uh, you know, at a mind-boggling uh, rate. And I'm sure with the kind of policy frameworks we have, with the kind of ecosystem we are building it, and with the strategic uh, policy, innovation, financing, uh, and business models, 
And with the world-class manufacturing we are going to build, and India, I'm sure, is poised to be a leader on a global storage. We need to ensure that first we are meeting our own targets, the 2030, and then while doing though, we can also become a, a benchmark in supporting in many other uh, countries around the world in that. So I really want you know, these kind of events help all the stakeholders come together and discuss because this is not any incremental uh, thing. It's a huge step up in that. And that's only we need. All of our minds have to be put together to ensure that we really make it happen. We have a huge opportunity for us and let's enjoy this opportunity and we have never seen this kind of opportunity in the last several years. Thank you very much uh, for giving me this opportunity in that.